Hello and welcome to a 60s themed film about redox chemistry. This is again about balancing redox equations, but uh, this time instead of putting half equations for monatomic ions together, we're going to do it for the polyatomic species that we've looked at in the last film. If you haven't seen that film yet, then do so because I'm going to be going through this quite quickly on the basis that you've got the knowledge required. Okay, so we're going to be putting half equations together again and we're going to be doing it once again having been told the names of the starting and finishing materials but also by unpicking the observations from an experiment and seeing what must have gone on. Okay, and just like before there's the sequence of steps to follow. This is the same sequence of steps so I'm not going to dwell on this and just remember that these first two steps are in no particular order of preference. Right, so here's my first example. It involves oxalic acid, which, if we can't remember the formula for, is printed on the data sheet. Um, oxalic acid and bromine water. Now, bromine water contains Br2, okay? Just like any halogen water. It's just that halogen dissolved in water. They're shaken together and they form bromide ions, so that's turning into Br-, and this is turning into CO2. Now, I'm not going to spend a long time explaining how I'm getting these two half equations, because we've done it before, as I say. Um, but in actual fact, these two are printed on the data sheet, so you don't have to be able to figure them out. But you ought to be able to figure them out based on the fact that you've been told what you start with and what you end up with. Okay, anyway, getting back to the process of writing a balanced redox equation, I've got two electrons in both equations. I've got to balance the electrons, but they're already balanced. And now combine them and cancel the electrons. Well, I'm not going to bother putting the electrons in. I'm just going to assume that my two electrons are going to cancel out. They're on different sides of the half equation, so that's a good start. And I'm going to have C2H2O4 and Br2. Remember, I'm just putting all the reactants together. And now I'm putting all the products together. So that's 2CO2 and 2H plus and 2Br minus. Now, um, as I say, no electrons in here because I'm assuming they cancel. But a good little check here to see if you've done things right is to see if the charges are balanced for the overall equation. We've got no charge over here. We've actually got no charge over there because the 2 plus and 2 minus cancel. So if the charge is balanced, that's normally a good sign that you've done something right. Here is our next example. Now this highlights a couple of really commonly seen substances in redox chemistry. We've got iron 2 turning into iron 3 and we've also got potassium dichromate in an acidified solution. Now let's have a look at why that is, okay? So we've got dichromate cr 20 minus. That's turning into chromium 3 plus, okay? And like before, the half equation looks like this. And if we can't figure that out, in actual fact, we can look this one up on the data sheet. Okay. What's the other half equation? Well, iron 2 is turning into iron 3. Oh, sorry, I was just going to say it wasn't I. That, um, why have we acidified this? Well, unless you've got H plus ions, unless you've got acid around, this equation can't actually happen. So dichromate won't oxidize anything unless you put acid in. So that's why you'll always see something about an acid being mentioned with this substance. Okay, iron 2 turning into iron 3. Put some electrons on the more positive side and hope that they're on the opposite side to the other one. That's a good thing. Right, number of electrons here is 1, 6 over there. So I need 6 of this whole second equation. Now putting these together when you've multiplied them can be a bit easy sometimes to forget to multiply something. So I'm going to be careful that I multiply this whole lot by 6. Let's see what I've got. I've got cr 2072 minus and 14H plus for my first equation. 6Fe2 plus in the reactants of my second. And those things are turning into 2Cr3 plus and 7H2Os and 6Fe3 plus. Now, if you didn't put that 6 in front of the Fe3+, plus, you'd probably see that your charges don't balance, because at the moment we've got 2 minus and 14 plus, so that's 12 plus. Another 12 plus, so that's 24 plus. Over here, we've got 6 plus here, 18 plus there, so that's 24 plus as well. So, 
if they didn't balance, if you hadn't put that six there, it wouldn't work and you'd know you'd done something wrong. Anyway, let's go on to having a look at a couple of examples where we're not told what the products are. So in other words, we're given just observations from an experiment. Okay, <coughs> what have we got here to start with? Well, we've got permanganate ions and we've got iodide ions. Now, potassium ions are just going to sit around in the solution and you'll see later in the reaction feasibility uh, film why that is. We won't worry about it for now. We'll just look at what we've got to start with and what we're ending up based on the products. Okay, oh, sorry, on the observations. We're starting off with manganate and iodide. Now, this st solution starting off being purple and it's going brown. This ion is purple. It's really intense color. This one's colorless. Solution seems to be going brown. Well, what could be causing that? Well, iodine is brown in water. So if the iodide ions turn to iodine, then they would turn the solution brown. Where's this purple color going? Well, when manganate turns into Mn2+, we form this very, very pale pink ion. In fact, it's effectively colorless. If you're in an exam, you should be calling it very pale pink, but it's almost impossible to see that pale pink color. And once you've got those two bits there, you can actually look up the equation on the data sheet. It's this one that we've seen before, 8H+, and we've got five electrons on this side. Now, again, if I've got two half equations where the electrons aren't on opposite sides, I've immediately spotted that I've done something wrong, but they are on opposite sides. I've got five of them there and two of them there. How to solve this problem? Well, I'm going to have to multiply one equation by two and the other one by five. And now I've got quite a lot of things to consider when I'm combining the two. So let's just be careful as we do this. We've got two MnO4 minus and 16H plus and 10I minus. Um, making two Mn2 pluses and eight waters and five I2s. Once again, I'm not putting the electrons in because they would cancel out. Check all the charges here, but I'm not going to do that. But if you want to pause the film and, and do it yourself, you can, obviously. But I'm going to go on to the next uh, example now. And this is the last one we're going to look at. It just highlights a couple of really important points again. Um, one is this sulfuric acid that's sitting here for no apparent reason, seemingly. And also, um, what else? was it? Uh, oh yes, there was some cancelling that we can do in our overall equation, but we'll come to that in just a moment. So I'm starting with sodium dichromate, so as soon as I see dichromate, I should be thinking cr 2072 minus. This is actually orange, okay? So it's starting off orange. The acid is in here, once again, because we need acid to make this work, okay? We can't make our chromium 3 plus ions unless we've got the H plus ions in here to balance things up. Okay, so there's one of my half equations. That one's on the waste data sheet. What's the other process that's occurring? Well, oxalic acid, C2H2O4, that's turning into, what's that turning into? Well, there's a colorless gas being formed, bubbles. So that's our CO2. Okay, and here's, again, what should be a familiar half equation. If it's not familiar yet, then probably by the time you finish the redox topic, it will be. Let's have a look at the electrons. Six there, two there. So I'm just going to multiply this equation by three to give me six in both of them. Okay, and let's go ahead and write that out and see whether we can actually cancel them some things this time. Okay, so Cr2072 minus plus 14H plus is my reactants there. And three oxalic acids, C2H2O4, forming 2Cr3+, plus and 7H2O, as well as 2CO2s multiplied by 3, so that's 6CO2, <coughs> and 2H+, plus is multiplied by 3, so that's 6H+. Plus. Now notice here, I've got H+, plus on both sides, so I can actually cross them out here because I've got six of them and that's going to get rid of six of these so I'll change that to an eight. 
Okay, do the charges balance, 8 plus, 2 minus 6 plus, and 6 plus over here. So that works. Okay, so I've covered lots and lots of points there, really, in that film. Um, but hopefully now you feel comfortable um, balancing overall redox equations with the polyatomic uh, half equations that we've been looking at. If anything at all doesn't make sense, uh, it would be good to ask about this before you go on because a lot of the redox calculations that we'll end up looking at, they rely on these um, equations to a, to a great extent. So uh, if you've got any questions at all, please feel free to comment. Um, let me know if I've made any slips. Uh, come and see me if you want if you want to get some help with these things. And... Uh, get a bit of practice done because these things are really, really important in the redox topic.